and welcome along to another Longford County Matters. Now technically it is autumn but this must be one of the best summer days that we've had in a while. Here's what's coming up on today's programme. I meet up with Longford Beekeepers Association at their Avery just outside the village of Cullifad. I chat to Elspeth and Rob to find out more about what's involved with beekeeping. Then we're with photographer Eamon Farrell, who's just celebrated 40 years in business. Eamon tells us about his love of photography and the changes he's seen over the past 40 years. After the break, I visit Healthy Options in Longford Town and meet nutritional therapist Laura Thompson, who specialises in bioresonance testing, acupuncture and dietary advice. And in her spare time, she's even written her first children's book. Finally, I'm with artist Gordon Farrell at the Engage Art Space in Longford Town. Gordon chats to us about a wonderful exhibition by three recent graduates of Sligo IT. But first, to the village of Cully Fad, where County Longford Beekeepers Association meet up. But tell us, who is the County Longford Beekeepers Association and when did you start? Uh, the Beekeepers Association is a group of bee fanatics who spend all of their summer looking after bees and uh, have a vision to make sure that we maintain bees in the environment for the good of the bees. When did, they, when did the group get together, Elspeth? Well, years and years and years ago, long before my time, I'm sure it's in existence 30 or 40 years. So how long are you part of the group now? I'm only four years here. So you're a newbie? I'm a newbie, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Listen, Rob, you're also a, a bee enthusiast, fanatic, as Elspeth would say. Um, we did a lovely bee inspection there where we opened up two different hives. Tell us about the process of open up, opening up the hives and, and smoking. What is smoking first? The idea of smoking is to get the bees to eat a bit of honey so they're a bit uh, dozy or relaxed so they don't attack you when you go to open the hive. Um, it just makes it easier for them, less stressful and it means that you can inspect the hive a bit better. The reason we inspect the hive is one, to see, make sure the queen is there, that she's laying, there's no disease, because there's many diseases around like American fowl brood and European fowl brood, which if you have them, unfortunately, the, the, the hive is no good because it'll spread to other hives. It's not, it's not a controllable disease. There's other diseases like uh, Verona mite, that is actually affecting the bees big time at the moment and that's one of the reasons why they're in decline in the wildlife because uh, the bees can't uh, manage them. Some bees will be able to groom them off if they're a good strong hive okay. but uh, other than that the raw mite will actually, it's a, a parasite that and actually... It'll, it'll, it'll interfere with, with the... Yeah, it sucks the, the blood off the bees and go, when it's, uh, they lay their eggs in the larvae Rob, so I mean, like that, we did see the larvae in, in the comb and it's almost like a little white cocoon or something stuck in there. Yes, and they're the, the baby bees that are going to grow into a full, mature adult bee. Um, they, the small ones that are level are just the worker bees and yes. they're all females. And if you saw the drone ones, they're ones that are higher up, yeah. kind of like a dome above the, the rest of them. And they're the male bees, which are drones. They would be unfertile um, they don't sting laid. either, Rob. They don't really the sting. The drones don't, no. Their, their only purpose in, in life is really to uh, fertile a queen when she goes, a virgin queen goes out to mate. Okay. And that's usually from, depending on where you are in the country, but it can be from uh, late April to even late August, which was nearly too late at that stage for yes. them to build up for the winter. Well, we did see a queen. We got a glimpse. It took us a while, Elspeth, but we did spot a queen and it was, had a little blue mark on it. Um, we, were, we were asking Dieter what that was about. Why do you mark them? Well, there are two reasons. First of all, we use a different colour for each year. Blue is the colour for this year and it means we know the age of that queen when we open up the hive. And we also mark them so they're easily found among all the other bees because it's very hard to find one queen among 50,000 bees. <laughs> uh, Rob, I mean, it's the, the hives here look to be in great shape. Um, yeah. But as everyone said, this year was a slow year. Um, the flowers were a little sleepy due to the weather and so were yeah. the bees. Yeah, and especially bees will only fly during dry days above 10 degrees Celsius. So as you pre appreciate this year, it was a warm year, but it was a very wet year. So uh, the size of bee and a raindrop and that, you can see why they won't fly because it's just too heavy on them. They get too much wet and then they'll fall to the ground and die. So they won't fly in that weather. And unfortunately this year, it's been an absolutely wet summer. So a lot of the 
beekeepers are saying that they're having less honey harvest this year and yeah. um, they reckon about a third of uh, what they got last year. Yeah, but but you did mention the golden word there, and that is honey, because and wherever there's a hive, you're hoping there's a little bit of honey. And I was a bit of a honey bear there. Um, Dieter brought along some of his prize honey. I think it got second prize at the local fair, and uh, there was a first prize winner here amongst you as well. But tell us about the honey. I mean, that is the prize. That is, of course, the prize. And uh, usually in July or August, you can extract honey if it's completely capped, and extract it and put it in jars for either sale or for consumption in the house. And that's the interesting thing, Rob. I wouldn't have known that. I mean, when the comb is ready, they put that cap of almost of a waxy substance on top. Yeah. That lets you know we're ready to go. Yes, exactly, because they, they'll only cap it when it's ready to actually, the moisture content is less than around 12% or 17%. About 18%, yeah. yeah. So when it's that reach, it, they'll cap it, and that's how you know it's ready to go then to take out. You do have to leave some... Uh, honey for the winter for the bees as well so that's why this time of year we'll take the the supers which is the small frames of honey off and just leave the box where the queen was and they later on now from now on they'll start filling up the sides the outer rims for honey for the, the winter queen, for themselves because the, the queen will stop uh, slow down laying currently at peak she would be laying about 1500 eggs a day but as it's coming to the end of august now she'll start ramping down fairly quickly and she's done her work she's done her work so she'll probably she probably will lay depend on the winter but very little so they, they never stop working even at night if you go behind beside the hive you'll actually hear them buzzing away inside the hive as well next i head off to longford town to meet up with photographer eamon farrell Well, Eamon, you're a long time in the photography business here in Longford. Well, I'm 40 years at the business. I started off taking photographs at the dances, believe it or not. That's a long time ago. And then I opened up, uh, I started to work for Multiphoto in Longford for a couple of years. And then I started on my own and I'm uh, 40 years ahead now. So um, I, Eamon, things have changed in the world of photography um, if, since 40 years ago. We've really upgraded, updated. Tell us about moving with technology. Well, it used to be all negative which was difficult and, and not many people was able to work it properly. Now with the digital, everybody is ahead. There's postmen ahead, there's every kind of guys that work in, ahead in town here. And um, like if they're looking for a professional, they have to get a guy that has the experience like myself. You know? Eamon, you have a beautiful <coughs> selection of photographs in the front window there, old pictures of Longford. Tell us about some of these. Yeah, they're from um, my brother, Harry. He, he worked in the leader office for 50 years. That's the Longford leader. Longford leader. He worked in it for 50 years. And uh, he gave me all the negatives of all those pictures. And I do sell them, you know. They're a very, very good seller for tourists. Well, because I was going to say, I mean, you're capturing really bygone days of Longford there, the old yeah. street. I mean... Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. What's your favourite one of them? The favourite one is the Ke Longford Castle, which was knocked in the 60s, I think. And it, it, there was a pub next to it much long time before that. But they knocked it down and uh, it was really, really tragic that that was knocked. Yeah. Such a, such a tourist attraction it would be. Absolutely. <coughs> yeah. Eamon, I mean, I suppose weddings are the big thing that you specialise in. Ah, yeah, weddings. Uh, like, I'm in 40 years at the weddings, you know. I do fantastic and uh, a lot of local weddings and all around the hotels, you know, local. Pity we haven't got a, a hotel like in Longford that, uh, that does weddings. We, yeah. we, you know, I like You're lacking to, that. I, we're lacking it, unfortunately, because I used to do, the Longford Average used to do six weddings a week. Mm. Once they were fantastic. Eamon, what, what, does it, what does it take to get that perfect wedding photograph? What are people looking for? Well, casual, really. They don't want to be posed too much. They like the casual shots. But you have to take, with digital, it's easy taking that because you can take 40 shots in a second, where mm. the, with the camera, with the negative rather, you couldn't. You it know, was, you it take, was one shot maybe. Oh, and maybe take 36 photographs at a wedding. Yeah. Now you're taking 500. And you can scan, scan through them at your leisure oh, afterwards. Oh, absolutely, and, and change them to black and white, sepia, may, black and white with uh, colour bouquets, you know, oh, yeah, everything is easy now with the digital, you know. Another fun thing I suppose that you do is portraits, children's portraits, family portraits, things oh, yeah, like that. We, uh, that goes very well now. Especially around the Christmas, I do specials at Christmas and they come with fantastic. And then we have special angel photographs, they go fantastic too. And then we do the old style what, photograph. What brought you into photography in the first place, Eamon? Oh, what brought me, I came, I was home from England 
on my holidays and I was at a dance and I saw a guy taking photographs at a dance and I started the next Monday and it was fantastic from that day to this. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Magic. I mean, you were saying to me as well, I, I, things have changed so much in the world of photography, say here now in your shop. I mean, you have the latest of things. You just slip your card in and your photos are printed out oh, within seconds. A, it prints from all kinds of phones. Uh, I have a girl work on EFA and she's fantastic. Uh, you do the fo uh, we can do the phones, uh, the iPhone, smartphones in two seconds, you know, it's fantastic really, you know. I mean, could you have believed when you were starting to take for photographs 40 years ago that things would progress so much? Oh my God, I just have to buy in four new, um, four new uh, <coughs> machines there, the very latest in uh, Kodak Express machines. I had the uh, um, wet labs, now this is a dry lab and the quality is unbelievable. Do you still love taking the photographs, I Eamon? absolutely love it. I absolutely love it and I'm 40 years old. What do you love about I it? I don't know, it's, uh, it must be the people, about meeting people. Because I have a pub up here 40 years as well. Everything is 40 years with me. I had my 40th anniversary there a couple of weeks ago, last year. And um, oh, I, loved, I love meeting people and I'm a long time ahead. Well, listen, you keep doing what you, what you love best and thanks for chatting to us today. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you very much. It's time to take a short break, but here's what's still to come in part two. I visit Healthy Options in Longford Town and meet nutritional therapist Laura Thompson to find out more about allergy testing. And I'm with artist Gordon Farrell at the Engage Art Space in Longford Town to find out more about a wonderful exhibition that's been running there. Welcome back. You're watching Longford County Matters right here on Irish TV. I'm off to Healthy Options in Longford Town to meet nutritional therapist Laura Thompson. Well, Laura, nutritional health is very important to you. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's not just a job to me, it's also a passion and a lifestyle as well. Um, it's something I've been interested in for the last 20 years. Um, I opened up a health food shop in Longford 20 years ago and that to me was the beginning of my journey. Laura, um, I suppose it's, it's, it's been wonderful today. I've come into the clinic to you here in Longford Town. Um, you've just done a treatment with me. Tell me what you did. Okay, well, the, I do various different types of food intolerance testing and allergy testing. That's huge at the minute and it has quite a, you know, a lot of people are very interested in allergy testing and food intolerance testing. But I like to think the test that I do is a little bit more than a food intolerance test. The test that I did on you is called bioresonance and and really what we're doing, Karina, is we're looking at your health history. So when you come in, I'm going to take quite a detailed case history from you, see what your past health issues have been and what your goals are now, because that's very important. What, what do you want to achieve? What areas of your health do you think need improving? Mm -hmm. So we did a little test on you. We looked through the various different organs of the body. I did a tongue analysis, a pulse analysis, looked at your nails, and we get an idea of what your overall health is like. So, well, uh, we'll, we'll start off, we did the, the background, yes. then we went into the different organs. Um, I was showing up for liver and yes. colon. Yeah, well, your liver is a major elimination organ, it's a major detox organ, and so is the bowel. So there's nothing particularly unusual about that, it's nothing, a lot of people stress when the liver comes up, they think, you know, am I an alcoholic, am I drinking too much, you know, but it's not really all about alcohol, your liver is a filter system. So if we're going to look at your health and detox you, we've always got to look at the liver and the bowel. Mm -hmm. So your readings were quite good nothing um, that I would be concerned about, just a, maybe a little bit of a cleanse would be good for you. Mm -hmm. Laura, after that then we moved on to foodstuffs. Um, you have a, a list of foods, some of them I wouldn't have expected to see here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have things like cabbage, eggs, weeds even, dogs, yes. things like that. Talk to us about general allergies that people have. Well, a lot of people when they have an allergy, they generally have an idea of what they're allergic to, you know. What happens if you had a food intolerance is that 
sometimes you might eat that orange today and have absolutely no problem with it. Then you might eat it next week and you might have a reaction to it. And that's a food intolerance. So what we were doing when we were looking at your foods, we were looking to see if there was anything that you had a sensitivity to. So what showed up was quite interesting. Yes, yeah. You are slightly sensitive to wheat. Um, now, you have told me that you've been kind of eliminating wheat a little bit from your diet, so that's probably why it wasn't quite a high sensitivity, but there is definitely um, a reaction there to wheat. Wheat is a very um, difficult one because people tend, we tend to eat a lot of uh, bread, a lot of pasta, and it's quite a main staple in the diet. And often what happens is people have an intolerance to wheat because of the farming methods that are, you know, used in the wheat process. Mm -hmm. So some Sometimes people could have organic wheat and not have a problem, you know. So it is it is an issue for a lot of people with wheat is. Laura, what I found really interesting as well was that well I reacted to cow's milk, which again is a common enough mm, uh, intolerance. Is, yeah, yeah. But bananas, it went it yeah. went for bananas. Bananas are often um, associated with migraines and headaches, you know. Um, the other thing about bananas is when I looked at your tongue, Karina, I could see that there was a little bit of coating on your tongue. I could also see teeth marks on, around the edge of your tongue and that's a sign that there's a little bit of congestion in your system and bananas tend to be quite congest congestive so anybody who maybe suffers from sinus for example will often have issues with bananas as well tonsillitis you know um, chest chest infections that kind of thing it is kind of a phlegm producing fruit and it does cause a little bit of congestion it's a bit sticky and it tends to stick to the wall of the bowel a little bit but Laura what I'm also intrigued about is a book that you've written recently why can't I run Laura Thompson tell us about this book this is about children's health and that's something that's very important to you yeah I, I get a lot of children in my clinic and one of the things that you know we all know there is an issue with childhood obesity in Ireland and it is something that can be very difficult to address you've got a very young child you don't want to um, tell them that they're fat, that they're overweight. You certainly don't want to mention the obesity word. So this is my way of maybe introducing the fact that the consequences to maybe eating an unhealthy diet. You know, I think um, years ago, when I was a child, w the stories that we were told always had a moral at the end of it, you know, and I think in some ways it's kind of lacking a little bit in children's stories. So this book is about a little boy called James who has a dog called Scruff and he's the best thing in the world to him, his best friend. And it's about a medical issue that Scruff has because Scruff is a little bit overweight. In fact, he's obese. And a visit to the vet tells James that the dog is suffering from obesity. And this is his journey, James and Scruff's journey to better health. And I'm hoping that it will just send that message to young children that, you know, eating healthy, exercising is a good way of keeping fit. Finally, I'm off to the Engage Art Space in Longford Town to meet up with artist Gordon Farrell to find out about a wonderful exhibition that's been running there. Well, Gordon, we're here in the, the Engage Space in, in Longford Town. Tell us where we are. We're in the heart of Longford Town. Um, it's a very old uh, 1960s building that's been left to us for the uh, art uh, kind of rejuvenation of Longford, uh, an art space, dedicated art space at the moment for Longford. You're part of the Engage Longford group, the arts group, and um, you're hosting a fabulous exhibition here at the minute with three three very different artists, yes. uh, Gordon. Um, you're going to talk to us a little bit about what's here. Let's start off with the fabulous sculpture that's behind me. What's that about? Well, it's to do with child uh, slave labour. It's got to do with human trafficking. Um, and it, it's a very expressive piece. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's very striking. Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, the reference, uh, the use of the the doll's head, or the. Can do you know much about how it created this work? Well, I mean, this is a process. It's not just you know you come up with a piece and you uh, exhibit it. This is a long process of finding out which medium, which symbolism to use. He's used symbolism of. Um, uh, uh, cotton, cotton coils that kids use when they're 
up to three and four years of age, slave labour, yeah. and we've got baby dolls, baby doll heads, which are iconic in the Western civilization for youth and child and infantry, uh, infancy. So he uses this very effectively in a very wooden kind of throwaway aspect, and that's exactly what slave labour is, kind of a throwaway industry. You throw slaves away, and he's got this throwaway medium that you know, ex expresses that. I mean, it's a really, really striking piece. Um, mm. how, do, how, how have people here in Longford Town reacted to this? They reacted to this very strongly, and it's uh, because it was of its time, it's on the news, and it's in our, in, it's in our scope. Um, and we've got the Mediterranean thing going on, we've got you know, course, Syria, migrants and all that kind of thing going on. Waters. It's hugely important. And uh, Mr. Scott's work is so apt, so powerful at the moment. Really and making so people think as well here it in Longford. It is, but it's making people think where they stand. It's not just making people think of what happened long ago, it's making people think what's happening right now. Well, we move on now, Gordon. The next artist, again, completely different style. Who have we got? We've got a printer, a uh, graduate from Sligo, um, Gavin Porter. Um, Gavin's work is dealing with the uncanny nature of forms and phenomena. He deals with the macro, uh, macro, micro worlds which are ever present in our daily lives, yeah. using form and also the printing process, which demands a certain reverse thinking. So if you do start to print, you need to know exactly what you're going to do. You can't just haphazardly do it. You have to pre-plan it and think your process backwards. So it's a very dedicated type of form of artwork and it's a form of artwork that will confirm your creative process. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we looked at one of the pictures that he has there. Um, it's almost, it reminded me of intestines, <laughs> something yeah, like that. Yeah, something, yeah. Some, some sort of a natural form that's all bound up. You said, what did you say it reminded you of? Um, tapeworm. <laughs> tapeworm. But, I mean, that's the reality of his work. Yeah. It, it, it triggers certain realities, it cer triggers certain uh, kind of fears, like yeah. I don't like fear, uh, tapeworm, but it does trigger certain uh, emotions in people. Yeah. And all it is basically is a form on a two dimensional space, but yeah. it triggers triggers a lot. Yeah. Uh, as you said, actually, what's lovely about that is you can actually see the end of the of the, the rope or the, or the intestine or the gut the or whatever it is. The thing about uh, Gavin's work is um, if you actually unravel the print, it will actually unravel. There's no kind of hiccup or mistake where it will stop. So if you actually took the print and took the string it. and took it out, it would actually unravel, yeah. How, how have people yeah. related to some of the other work here, Gordon? I mean, like the larger paintings of Matthews. Oh, fantastic. I mean, you don't see this kind of work in... in, in you don't see, see this kind of work normally. So come into the space and engage, and you see this large-scale work that has got months, if not years, of work and research and thought put into it. And then we have the final piece hanging here. It's phenomenal. It's, it's wonderful. It really is wonderful. Yeah. Lastly, Gordon, it's great to see how, I suppose, a variety of artists work really well in the one space. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the greatest difficulties is to complement all the work. You can't have two extreme works where it leaves you disjointed one from one extreme to the other and you walk out kind of going, kind of dizzy. Everything has to complement each other. And I think this show really does that, complements everything. Yeah. Well, time has flown by and that's it for another Longford County Matters. Don't forget, if there's something happening in your community, please do contact us at longford at irishtv.ie for the attention of yours truly, Karina Charles. Until next time, take care.